Listen, I'm going to tell a short version of a recap for those who weren't here last week. Uh, for those who are in the dark, don't know what's going on. Just going to bring you up to speed. Uh, about, um, about a week and a half ago, maybe now, um, I was minding my own business, uh, living my best life in my place of peace. And some people started hitting me up on social media telling me that former Hollywood star Monique and that husband of hers were on their uh, uh, Periscope uh, uh, podcast. And um, uh, she was talking about me. And so they sent me the link to go look at it. They told me where in the video to start watching so that I wouldn't have to endure all that 70s black exploitation. My brother, my sister, uh, you know, halfway slave talk that they do. Um, and so I went and watched the broadcast and I listened to this woman completely recharacterize a radio interview that we did in 2015. That's three years ago. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Three years ago. Um, and on the radio interview, uh, we were on the radio interview together because I had done a, um, I had done a report on Cafe Mocha Radio, just kind of talking about the, the during my time on the Tom Jordan Morning Show when I, I had a front row seat to award show season and I chronicled Monique's bad behavior in Hollywood and how she was setting herself up uh, to be in a position where she wasn't going to work. Um, and on the radio, I said during my time on the Tom Jordan Morning Show, if she keeps doing the way she's doing, she will never work again in this town. And lo and behold, um, I'm nobody's prophet and I ain't nobody's psychic. Uh, but who knew I was right? So here we are in 2015. Uh, Monique did an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, and it wasn't just an interview where there was a revelation that she was blacklisted. But the interview was done in an effort to promote her movie Black Bird. Uh, so she didn't tell this story just because she wanted to share with her followers that she had been blacklisted. She was telling this story to get people to go see this movie. Now, Monique has a lot of problems with Hollywood, as you guys see on this video, and she complains about the industry and how it works, but the, she doesn't mind employing the practices of Hollywood, which is every time you have a movie, a TV show, or a project to promote, you share some uh, story to get people interested. So, and in that... Uh, um, interview about being blacklisted she revealed that Lee Daniels had called her and uh, told her that you know she couldn't get work and that he wanted her to have a meeting at Fox about Empire but Fox wouldn't even see her based on her reputation so I say all of that to say that uh, I went on Cafe Mocha and just kind of pulled from my old journal from the Tom Journal Morning Show and talked about that time and some of the things she did um um and Blackbird was an independent film. It was a, a movie that she was uh, supposedly a producer of. So uh, it was, you know, um, she had vested interest in getting people there. So she didn't like my report. She called the executive producer. She asked if she come on the show. Uh, she came on the show, and she brought that husband. And the two of them and I, with Lonnie Love and Angelique Perrin, had a conversation. And here's the thing. Anybody who knows me knows um, I'm very well read. Um... I, I do my homework and my research. Uh, you know, um, when I was doing regular segments on CNN, um, um, it was Brooke Baldwin on CNN who, who started to introduce me as a pop culture expert based on uh, my expertise in entertainment, my um, vast knowledge of entertainment, and my ability to expound on most topics related to entertainment and pop culture uh, and, you know, the whole Hollywood society. And so um, I didn't brand myself or call myself a pop culture expert. That's a title that I got when I was at CNN, um, just to be factual and actual. I know Monique on her, um, in her radio interviews on her Periscope podcast and when she did Sway in the Morning, uh, likes to call me that gossip reporter John Mary, M-A-R-Y, uh, but that's not what I do. I've never been that gossip reporter. I've always been an entertainment journalist, uh, and then I evolved, as many of you know, into hosting television and doing brand influencer work. So regardless, um, as an employed person in the Hollywood community, um, I went on the radio show with her and that husband, and we went back and forth. I was very professional. I was very po poised. Um, but I countered a lot of the misinformation that they gave on the show. One of the things that they said on the show, which was completely false, was that Monique was the first woman of color 
to host her own late night talk show, which was not the case. On a national scale, uh, as I said last week, Whoopi Goldberg was the first woman of color to have her own daily late night show. But Wanda Sykes also had a late night show on the weekends. And Della Reese was the first woman of color to actually host a late night show because she's the guest co-host of uh, The Tonight Show. So, did that interview. Everything went off as... Um, very greatly. The Hollywood community responded well to it. Um, and I moved on with my life, moved on with my career, have continued to work for the last three years. Um, however, um, unemployable Monique and that husband were on their Periscope podcast about a week and a half ago and completely recharacterized how that conversation went, said that I uh, was endorsing Hollywood's mistreatment of women that me, Kim Whitley, and Cheryl Underwood wanted her to uh, um, participate in an act of slavery, that I said that she should just be drinking champagne and eating strawberries in first class and should be content with that, um, and that I kept avoiding answering what I work for free. So uh, that's how we got to this place. Those who watched my Let's Talk, Lo Let's Talk Live last week uh, saw uh, me address this then. I thought I was done, uh, was ready to move on. And then she went on Sway in the Morning and made reference to me again um, before showing up in my social media. So here's the thing. Um, I did not watch the entire Sway in the Morning broadcast because at this point in my life, I can't not stomach Monique and that husband and all that, my brother, my sister, kumbaya, my lord, talk. I can't do it. It drives me nuts. Um, I don't believe that the things that they say and the delivery in which they give it is authentic. And so because of that, I just, I can't stomach it. And so with that in mind, somebody sent me a clip where she said she was the most decorated comedian, um, uh, alive. Well, I know that that's factually incorrect because, um... Whoopi Goldberg is the only comic that currently has an EGOT. Uh, for those who did not see the video that I cut in response to Monique, um, an EGOT is a select group of people, I think there's 13 of them at this point, uh, that have an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. They are the most prestigious awards that you could have. There's only a select group of people that have all of them. And it is the most decorated group of people to have the combination of those four people. Now, anybody who's in Hollywood understands what most decorated means, and, and they understand that that award is that prestigious that only a second group have it. So uh, I cut the video, breaking it down. Uh, Monique got upset, and she showed up on my Instagram timeline. Um, and because I like facts and figures, I'm going to read you the correspondence. Uh, she said, and I quote, and here is my printout of what was on my Instagram timeline. Um, Brother, I must give you an education. Our beautiful sister Whoopi is not a stand-up comic. Just ask her, brother. Love you to life. Now, before I even read to you how I responded, I just want to point out to you that Whoopi is an EGOT winner. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Now, here's the thing. Whoopi has a whole lot of other awards, but she has the four most prestigious awards that you can receive in this business. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. And the Grammy in her EGOT, guess what it's for? A comedy album. So I'm not sure, uh, you know, what alternate universe that Monique doesn't think Whoopi Goldberg is a comic. I'm not sure that she does, why she doesn't recall that Whoopi did uh, those comedy specials with Robin Williams and... Um, um, uh, and the other guy, I can't think of his name. Uh, I'm not sure if she never saw Whoopi Goldberg's stand-up comedy specials on HBO. I don't know why she doesn't realize that Whoopi Goldberg started in this business as a comic. And, and, and I just don't get it. But nonetheless, I responded to her sister. She called me brother, so I thought I should be nice. Not only have I worked with Whoopi Goldberg while co-hosting The View... Um, I've twice attended her stand-up comedy shows at Treasure Island in Las Vegas. That's me, myself, and I. John Murray. Uh, um, I went to Whoopi Goldberg's stand-up comedy shows at Treasure Island in Las Vegas. And being that her team is on uh, this thread and thanked me for stating the facts, which is true, um, maybe it's you that needs to be educated on the facts and how you cannot rewrite them. Just as you did on the Cafe Mocha radio interview when you stated you were the first woman of color to host a late night show, dismissing again Whoopi's accomplishment. Hashtag facts. 
So after I, I responded that way, Monique then responds. Here's the second group of uh, responses. This is Monday on my Instagram timeline. Um, and please, brother, tell me about our brother Jamie Awards. You know that everyone he has gotten, he deserves. I know you've done your homework. I've always done my homework, Monique. Um, I have done my homework. And I would not have to fact check you if you would keep my name out of your radio interviews. Because as a journalist and pop culture expert with an education and professional credits to back it, not the quote gossip reporter John Mary, like you've been saying on air, I live in a world based on research, facts, and figures, not made up statistics and rewrites of history. But I wish you all the best. Now, in response to me cutting this video and handling Monique that way, she... Um, has somebody circulating some meme uh, that uh, allegedly breaks down all the uh, physical wins and nominations that Monique, Whoopi Goldberg, Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, and Amy Schumer have. Um, here's the thing. What happens is, and I'm really going to explain to you guys how this happens. Um, when a person is nominated uh, uh, um, for a prestigious film award, like an Academy Award. Like if you're in a film like Jennifer Hudson was with Dreamgirls or Monique is with, uh, was with Precious, in addition to you um, being nominated and maybe winning in, uh, at all the major televised award shows, uh, the Golden Globes, the People's Choice Award, um, the SAG Awards, um, the Academy Awards, uh, the Independent Spirit Awards, um, um, you know, all of those awards where, you know, we, we've watched the red carpet to see how the people are dressed and all that stuff. Um, a lot of little small, um, uh, film critic associations across the country also may give you an award. So you might be the best actress from, um, Biloxi, uh, Mississippi or Mutlick, Kentucky or, um... Um, I talk like a slave, Louisiana. Like you, you might be the best winner uh, for film organizations, also in those particular cities. So you might get a lot of these little individual, like from like little small towns, you know. Um, but just because you have a lot of physical numbers of awards from small organizations and stuff, does not mean you're the most decorated. The most decorated means you have the most prestigious awards of them all. And in the entertainment industry, to be uh, most decorated, you have to have the EGOT. That is the pinnacle of award show success. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Now, Monique said, as you guys heard me read and showed you the paper from the printout, that Whoopi isn't a comic. Though she won a Grammy for Best Comedy Album. It shows you the alternate universe that Monique lives in. Um, but she thinks she's most decorated because she has a lot of awards for one role. Precious. Now, Monique has won four NAACP Image Awards for comedy on the Parkers. But all the rest of her awards are for a dramatic role where she threw a TV down the stairs at her daughter in Precious. And I'm going to be honest with you. Based on the phone calls that I've been getting since she picked the fight with me last week, um, I'm starting to believe she was not acting in Precious. I'm starting to think that this is who she really was. That maybe she should have won uh, a role for a woman depicting best documentary presentation. Because... Hello, the stories that I've been getting, and I'm not even going to share them. But let's just say this woman has been awful to people. Um, but oh, by the way, I'm going to share something with you in a minute. Hold on a little while longer. So took care of that on Instagram. She went away. On Tuesday, she shows up on my Twitter page. Academy Award winner. No, nothing to do, no work, no job. Just online all day trying to pick a fight with me, Cheryl Underwood, anybody that'll pay attention. So here we go again. My sweet brother. So very proud to be doing this. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, you guys know last week when I heard that she was talking about me on the radio and stuff, um, um, I posted a flyer from the touring play that Monique is doing. And for those who don't know, you can go to my timeline. Uh, the flyer is there. Monique is starring 
Monique, who turned down a half a million dollars from Netflix, and we're going to get into that Netflix thing too because more information is coming out now. Monique, who turned down a half a million dollars from Netflix and said that uh, she needed all of you all to boycott Netflix because they did race and gender uh, disparagement. Um, Monique is doing a touring play. It's called The Neighborhood Barbershop, When Love Ends. So the reason why those nine words are draped around barbershop is because this is a bootleg version of, the, of a play adapted from the Hollywood story, but so that the Hollywood studio can't come and sue them for doing uh, a licensed version of barbershop, they added those nine words around it to keep themselves from being sued. That's what we call bootleg, you know. That's when you add like a C and an A in the middle of the LV because you got a bootleg Louis Vuitton. So if Monique's career and value in Hollywood was, was that outstanding, why weren't they able to bootleg a movie that she actually appeared in? So you have to do a touring play of a film that you never even starred in. I mean, real talk. Just facts. So, nonetheless, so she responds, My sweet brother, so very proud to be doing this play. Thanks for putting it out there. Also, study your facts. We'll be talking soon. And she has the emoji with the eye open and the mouth, the tongue hanging out. So I wrote back, uh, Monique, I wish you would call me your sweet brother instead of making belittling references to me during your radio interviews. You enjoy the touring play. I'll enjoy working in Hollywood. If you stop mentioning me, I'll stop fact-checking your untruths. Go with God. So she writes back, Well, my brother, keep checking. When I say most decorated, I don't say with arrogance. Now, mind you, I'm just reading what she wrote. I don't say with arrogance because it's true. But you already know that. Stay tuned. I think she meant stay tuned. Um, so I wrote back, Monique, I honestly don't know why you say a lot of the things that you say, and I don't care. But your revisionist history of the radio interview we did for Cafe Mocha Radio and your negative comments about me on radio now is the only reason this exchange happened. Go be great. Leave me alone. Because that's how I honestly feel. If Monique had a job or a career, she wouldn't have time to sit on social media and pick fights with me and everybody else that she uh, has um, picked fights with. So then I said, I know you're probably frustrated that Oprah, Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Kim Whitley, Cheryl Underwood, and everyone else you've attempted to pick, fight with, pick fights with over the years all ignore you now for the obvious reasons. You're an unnecessary distraction, and now I'm following their lead. She writes back, don't be a coward, John. First of all, I'm so excited that she's learned how to say my name because she was calling me Juan for a long period of time. But don't, don't, um, um, don't be a coward, John. Join the rest of the folks you name and have a conversation with me. No, a conversation with you would make you relevant. So you like these conversations because it, it, what it does is it generates press for you. And press keeps you connected to an industry that won't hire you. So that's why you like these back and forths. But uh, after I address this today, I'm completely done with it. So my final response to her is, most people buy a new puppy when they want attention. I suggest you try that. Move on, lady. It's been eight years since the Oscar, three years since our radio interview. Stop living in the past. Find your new purpose outside of Hollywood, and I wish you all the best. When I say from my heart, from my heart of hearts, I wish Monique all the best. I don't know what is going on with her. I believe that there's some type of uh, mental disconnect now. Um, I believe that something has gone awry. I would say uh, for her to go on Iyanla, fix my life, but she'll never work on OWN because OWN and Oprah Winfrey are on the list of people that she'll never work with. What do you mean, John? What do you mean the list of people? Oh, there is a list of people who would never work with Monique ever again. So let's discuss them. Lionsgate, they did Precious. Tyler Perry, she disrespected him. Oprah Winfrey, Op Oprah Winfrey, I'll get to the Oprah Winfrey thing in a minute. Own Oprah's network. Lee Daniels, for all the obvious reasons. Fox. Uh, Will Packer. 
I'm gonna tell you about the Will Packer situation. ABC, she was up for a job there recently. They didn't hire her because of her reputation. BET, uh, the CEO there said working with Monique was one of the worst experiences of, of her career. CBS and the talk. Now she's online begging Cheryl Underwood to put her on the talk, but she was disrespectful to Julie Chen, who's married to the chairman of CBS when she was on Sway in the Morning. Do you think you'll ever work in CBS talking about Julie Chen? So, CBS. TV Land. I had a friend who had a meeting at TV Land, and the president of the network said that they were going to take a meeting with uh, Monique and then hmm, heard of her reputation and canceled it. Uh, Netflix, and lastly, Universal Pictures. Universal Pictures is where she did Almost Christmas. Well, why wouldn't Universal Pictures want to work with her? Almost Christmas came out. Monique appeared to promote it. She seemed to do a good job. Yeah, I thought so too. Until I got this email forwarded to me by somebody, and it's Will Packer uh, addressing that husband of hers um, with some of the things that Monique was doing behind the scenes. So let me share with you some of the things that happened behind the scenes at Almost Christmas so that you understand why Monique is unemployable in this business. And mind you, there's so many stories I could tell as I sit here in front of all of my awards, like her and Sydney stood there in front of all of their awards. Um, you know, I got my award from DECA, the marketing. I got my Fake Academy Award. I'm here with my awards tonight too, since awards are the theme of, of why we're having this dialogue. But let me find a place in the um, that I can read without, uh, you know. Let's see here. So at one point in the email uh, that was forwarded to me by someone else, Will Packer says, myself, my team, and Universal staff have gone out of their collective ways to bend over backwards to make Monique feel comfortable and respected during every step of this process. You have rejected reasonable attempts at positive and proactive communication. Monique is a immensely talented actress who deserves better representation than that. Even all of Hollywood can, is telling her, uh, that husband of yours is going to ruin everything. Um, and to think that you have directed your vitriol at someone who was an advocate uh, when it was time to cast this film, even though I was warned by numerous people around the industry about hiring Monique, primarily because of the transactional cost of dealing with you. So, translation. What Will Packer is saying here is everybody in this business told me it was a bad idea to hire you. I hired your wife despite the fact that people told me not to. And now that I'm in the thick of things with you, I realize you're the reason that nobody wants to hire her. He continues. I push for her. Your reputation precedes you, and I still advocated wholeheartedly to have Monique involved in this production. I said I will not allow what others are saying about my sister to keep me from giving an opportunity to a tremendous talent. And now, here you are being true to past form, attempting to swindle additional money from a production studio producer. Oh, well, what do you mean swindle money? Well, apparently... At multiple times while shooting this movie, that husband of hers went to the studio to try to shake them down to get money, more money from Monique for various ancillary things and complaints. Um, hold on, there's a race issue in here that I want to deal with. And I read, I understand you have brought up issues with production. Let's spend a little moment there. Your accusations are unfounded. You took major issue and uh, exception to the number of white people on the crew, despite the fact that I pointed out how extremely diverse our film crew was and that we had an overwhelming majority of black department heads. Pause. So apparently there's reverse racism going on here. Apparently Monique and that husband have a problem with white people and kept complaining about white people being employed on this movie. Hmm. And I read, you and Monique treated many of the various hourly employees on our crew horribly. Now, mind you, this is Will Packer, the executive producer of Almost Christmas, sending this email directly to uh, uh, that husband of Monique's. 
Um, you and Monique treated many of our various hourly employees horribly. It got so bad that I needed to remind both of you that you should direct your irritation and angst not to the PAs, EPK videographers, and assistants, but to me. Thus, the HNIC comment was born when I felt the need to let you know where the buck stopped. So apparently, Will Packer stepped to them after they kept harassing and treating the aforementioned uh, employees terribly. And he went to them and said, if you got problems on this set, you come to me. We all laughed about it and agreed to move forward in the spirit of positivity. And then something changed. You smelled an opportunity. Your subsequent faux outrage around that phrase, even going so far to spell out N-word and forward it around in an attempt to make it seem more egregious is disingenuous, especially coming from one of the funniest and foulest mouth comedians of her generation who has even referred to me as the N-word. But even still, once you express that you took issue with the phrasing, I apologize immediately. We should have moved on, but that would have not have helped your agenda of trying to get additional money any way you could. So because the executive producer said that I'm the HNIC on this movie, that husband of Monique's went to the studio, filed complaints about him, and asked for more money because of it. Sounds like Hollywood extortion to me. And how is the man married to a woman who is on her personal Periscope podcast saying she wished she could call me and the rest of these people MFers mad about him using the HNIC to, uh, uh, acronym to describe himself. Like, really? Oh, let's go ahead and finish the letter off. Let me cut to the chase. You've been trying to renegotiate your deal since you made it. You tried any and everything to get additional money from production, and now you're doing the same with marketing. That's part of the reason that the Precious campaign fell apart. Your reputation precedes you, so I understand this is your modus operandi. You are trying to get rewarded for your bad behavior. Your client has been asked to do less than many of her castmates that are working their tails off to promote this movie while still being given at your demands more than anybody else. We are ecstatic to have Monique be a part of the Almost Christmas campaign, and I hope she'll continue to do so in an effort to ensure the success of the movie without expectation of additional compensation. Sometimes, now this is the best thing Will Packer could have said to them, sometimes you have to sit back and look at yourself for the reason why your career is where it is. Sometimes it's not the industry, it's not Lionsgate, it's not Universal, it's not Oprah, it's not Lee Daniels, or Will Packer, or white people. Sometimes you have to say, maybe it's me. And that's the problem with Monique, and that's the problem with that husband of hers, because they sit and they do these videos, and they talk to a group of disenfranchised people who feel that the man is trying to hold them down. And they say, Monique is trying to help us. She for the people. Power to the people. And they get behind her foolishly, not shaking the story at its core, not digging deeper and researching. And no, no shade or disrespect to the bloggers that are out there or some of the less experienced uh, uh, journalists who are out there and they take social media headlines and a little bit of, of a video and they don't call publicists and they don't call and verify facts. They just take social media posts and create whole stories around them because for them it's all about clicks. It's not, being, it's not about being factual and actual. And so nobody has ever asked, why isn't Monique working and what happened with these last few projects? And, how has she only been hired for two projects since winning an Academy Award eight years ago? They don't do it. So instead, Monique, because she's a masterful manipulator, she always finds a legitimate cause like Me Too and Time's Up, and she attaches herself to the cause, so it makes it hard for you to differentiate between addressing her and addressing the cause. So when uh, Wanda Sykes, who was on the Tom Jordan Morning Show today, and she said, I'm not advocating for a boycott of Netflix. There's too many jobs over there, and I will probably work with them again. When she tweeted Monique, she wasn't tweeting Monique to say, I stand with you and boycott. She was tweeting Monique to say, Netflix offered me a low offer too. 
but I went somewhere else. Move on. Now, then you have Jada Pinkett Smith put out a statement saying you might not like Monique or her tactics, or the way that she says things, but the reality is that she has a good point. Monique doesn't have a good point. Time's Up had a good point. And they've been all over the news. They've been all over the war show. The reason why people were wearing all black to the Golden Globes. The reason why people are wearing white flowers to the Grammys. The reason why this whole movement is going forward and women are asking for what they deserve and getting what they deserve is because this movement has been in place. Monique is the leech who jumps onto the legit legitimate movement so that she can try to justify her irrelevant cause. Well, what do you mean irrelevant cause, John? What if she felt like she was more uh, worth more than the five hundred thousand dollars? What if you? Here's the thing: the stories, are, more details are coming out about this Netflix thing now. And the reality is that apparently Monique was offered three million dollars to come in and showcase for the network executives, so that they could make sure she was worth the three million dollars for her comedy special. She was offended that they asked her to come in and showcase, and so she decided, uh, I don't want to do that. So they said, well, if you don't want to come in and showcase for the comedy ex executives, well, then cool. Uh, we'll give you a half a million dollar flat offer. Now, when she cut that video standing against the wall looking like she was in a dungeon somewhere, like someone was holding her hostage and asking us to rally behind her and boycott because of the disinjustice that happened to the Rosa Parks of Hollywood, um, she didn't share with the fact that she was offered $3 million and her ego wouldn't let her go in there and meet with the people. And oh, by the way, uh, for anybody, and I don't understand why you would, but for anybody who says, well, Monique is as good or as talented or whatever as Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Amy Schumer, one word separates Monique from all of these people. Chris Rock, arena. Dave Chappelle, arena. Amy Schumer, arena. All three of them are currently selling out arenas. Monique played a comedy club in New York last weekend. A comedy club in New York. I probably should have went online and pulled the seating capacity of the club she was in. They three sold out arenas. Monique is in a comedy club. Netflix does analytics and algorithms to determine how many viewers will you bring to our network. The, the, the people who are selling out arenas, the likelihood of them bringing in more viewership is greater than the woman who is uh, only in the comedy club. I had a, um, a comedian call me the other day, won't say her name, but uh, uh, Monique had just played a funny bone club in, in the Midwest, and this particular female comedian was coming into the funny bone after Monique left. They said she treated the food staff horribly. First of all, the people are bringing your food from the kitchen to your dressing room. Why would you treat them bad? Don't you know they could spit in your food and stir it up and stuff like that? Haven't we learned that the only people that you, even if you're the nastiest of nasty people, why would you treat uh, wait staff bad? They can poison you. But I digress. This particular comic said, the fact that I uh, am playing the same clubs as Monique, uh, I don't know why she thinks she would get the half a million dollar offer. True talk. But nobody wants to look at the deeper issue here. Now, Monique is saying, well, look at my resume. Queens of Comedy ain't, was that, 20 years ago? You're, you're not playing large arenas, large venues now. You are in clubs. And, oh, you want to reference your Academy Award and that you're the most decorated, uh, 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 you're the most decorated comic alive? Well, baby, nobody gets an Academy Award for stand-up comedy. You get an Academy Award for acting. And the acting role you did, you were a beast of a mother. You threw your TV down the steps at your daughter, and you had your daughter molest you. So what about that role would warrant anybody paying you more money for a comedy special? If somebody can answer that, put it in, put it in the thread. Where's the equality in the math there? Because it doesn't add up to me. Oh, oh, but what about her social media? Have you looked at her Instagram? All Monique got is workout videos. Maybe she should have went to Netflix and asked for a Zumba special. Maybe they would have paid her for that since her whole uh, page is full of workout videos. Would you like me to pause so you can check the Instagram page? I'm just, I'm just pointing out facts here, people. We just do factual and actual. Now, it was also reported, you guys can find it online, 
Monique had a lien on her house, which means that the money must be getting funny. So you're going to turn down a half million dollars and ask people who follow you, most of them who have never seen a half a million dollars in their life, to boycott a streaming service when you probably could have used that money to pay off. Ooh, I don't even have to finish the sentence. It is what it is. But here's the thing. Hold on, I just dropped one of my pieces of paper. So here's the thing. Monique has put out several videos dogging out Oprah Winfrey. Now, how can you say that this campaign that you're on, you're doing it to advocate for women? You're promoting for women. You're standing in the gap for all women. If you were pro-woman, you wouldn't have stood on stage at the Apollo Theater at a Mother's Day conference and told Oprah Winfrey to suck your dick. Women who are pro-women don't disrespect other women that way. If you were pro-woman, you wouldn't have been on a video on your own social media page last night and you wouldn't have called Cheryl Underwood a bitch. Women who are pro-women don't talk to other women that way. And I saw the whole uh, part where, you know, your husband is crying. <laughs> And then she goes into this whole thing about if it wasn't for this man who was raising me, because that, that's why I call him daddy, because he's raising me, um, um, uh, I'd be calling um, all these people MFers. If you're all about positivity and advancing the culture, you're doing it for the culture. You're doing it for the women. You're doing it for all things positivity. I'm standing in the gap for Tiffany Haddish and the rest of these people. Kumbaya, my lord. We shall overcome someday. You would not talk to other people of color the way that you do. Because here's the thing. In all of my responses to Monique, I've never disrespected her. But I drive Monique crazy because I deal in facts and figures. And her and that husband make up stories. They make up statistics. They make up facts about Hollywood and people who don't work in the community and the culture, well, they don't know any differently. And, 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 and the people that she has a problem with, Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, Will Packer, Adrian Bailon, Cheryl Underwood, Julie Chen, Kim Whitley, Lottie, Dottie, Every, if you got a job, Monique got a problem with you. Uh, she has a problem with those people because the reality is that none of them will respond to her anymore because she's just an unnecessary distraction. But just in case somebody buys into her argument that Oprah Winfrey uh, has never uh, stood up for women's issues, um, maybe you never saw her talk show. Or maybe you never saw the speech at the Golden Globes that had people wanting Oprah Winfrey to save the world and was hashtagging Oprah 2020. But let's just deal with a little bit of what Oprah Winfrey has done for people of color. And all of which, she don't have to pat herself on the back for it or do a TV special or a Periscope podcast and brag about it. Do you know how many black men of color that Oprah Winfrey has paid a full ride through Morehouse University? Did you see that episode of the show? Uh, one of her final shows where her staff surprised her by having all those black brothers come out there and march around that stage that she had put through college? Or what about her school in Africa where she's paying, getting education to all these girls and giving them a chance at running the world in a way that they wouldn't without Oprah's school out there? Or if you want to just deal with like the Hollywood aspect of it, uh, Kim Whitley will tell you, before she did her show Raising Whitley on OWN, people would come up to her and be like, hey, Jackie, can you do Sandra Clark? Like, they couldn't separate the two of them. But because Oprah took a chance on Kim after having an arbitrary dinner where she learned of her story of adopting Joshua, she gave her a show, and for like four or five seasons, Kim became a household name, and it really helped to change the scope of her career. Or let's talk about Miss Robbie. A 70-year-old former Ike and Tina Turner background singer with one soul food restaurant in St. Louis who now has a half a dozen soul food restaurants, 
a, a cookbook is a household name and is in like season five or six or seven of her reality show. The, the woman is more famous now than she ever was as an Ike Turner backup singer. So you can't say that Oprah, the woman that everybody was trying to save, get to save the world and was tweeting Oprah 2020 just a few weeks ago, hasn't done nothing for black people. What have you done for black people? Monique, I've not seen you at any of the women's marches. I didn't see you out there with me on the campaign trail trying to keep Trump from being elected president of the United States last fall. What have you actually done for people of color other than raise hell on the Internet? Other than call people out and disrespect them on your Periscope podcast? What have you done other than disrupt people of color's business? You have only disrupted... Out of everybody who you've been disrespecting lately, the only non-black person that you're calling out is Julie Chen. And Adrian Bailon, she's Puerto Rican. We, you know, black adjacent. Everybody else, did, you have disrespected almost every successful black mogul in this business. And you know why you disrespect them? Because they attempted to help you. Anybody who's tried to talk sense into you, anybody who tried to talk you out of sabotaging your career, Oprah Winfrey called Monique at home during the Precious campaign when, when Monique's husband told Lionsgate that it was going to cost them $100,000 for her to go to the Toronto Film Festival to promote uh, Precious. Um, and here's the thing, just so everybody knows, you do not get paid as a Hollywood actor to promote your movies. I repeat, you do not get paid as a Hollywood actor to promote your movies. Promoting your movies is considered an extension of your existing job responsibilities. Your job does not end the last day on the set when they say cut. Your job ends when you take the time to promote your movie when it's ready to hit theaters or you promote your TV show when it's ready to hit theaters. Or if you end up in a, in a blessed case like Monique and you get a critically acclaimed work, you promote the project as a part of the award show season so that it sets you up so that you can work on greater projects and make money, more money than you could ever imagine. So you don't get paid. But what the studio does do is the studio will f fly you out first class. And when you're the star of a movie like Monique, they'll fly you, that husband, your kids, the babysitter, bam, bam, baby. They do whatever they got to do to make sure that you're comfortable. You typically stay in a big old suite for free. You have an open per diem, which means that if you're broke, you still have money to eat on the studio's behalf. You can still order movies on uh, the TV for your nanny on the studio's behalf. They take care of all of the expenses. And when you're in a situation like Monique was with Precious, when you actually go on the road and promote, you're not just promoting the work or the project. You're promoting your legacy in Hollywood because when you go to these luncheons, uh, to the luncheons, when you go to these events, when you go to these award shows and you're being respectable and you're gracious and you're kind to the people, you walk into these rooms and book jobs. Well, how do you know that, John? Well, I can tell you. I'll use my friend Kim Whitley as an example. Kim Whitley was in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And Kim Whitley had a series of comedy shows in D.C., and Curb Your Enthusiasm got nominated for uh, an Emmy. And Kim was not nominated for her work, but her episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm got the show nominated for an Emmy. And uh, so uh, HBO invited Kim as their guest to come to the Emmys with them and to go to their after parties and stuff. So Kim called me, because as, as, as most of you know, um, I'm wise counsel to a lot of my friends who happen to be celebrities. Um, Kim called me and said, John, should I cancel my appearance uh, during these last day of the comedy shows and actually go uh, out to the Emmys? I mean, I'm not nominated. I'll be losing money. I said, well, Kim, you'd be losing money right now, but the networking and being in the room could generate so much visibility for you. So Kim said, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take your judgment on this. Kim did not do her Sunday days of the comedy show. She went to L.A. She went to the award show. Everybody who was a voting member for the, for the Emmys who voted for Curb Your Enthusiasm, everybody wanted to talk to Kim. They loved her episode. She went into the party and booked two movies, the Jim Carrey movie and this other big white movie. Two movies just by being in the room. 
So sometimes showing up is just half the battle. So when you say, how do I benefit by promoting this work? And what's the benefit in me promoting something that I'm not being paid to be there? You are actually promoting yourself as a professional. And you can walk into that room, have a seat at the table, and be landing your next job. Just by showing that you're, you're polite, you're professional, and that I'm willing to do the work. So that hopefully gives you an insight into what happens when somebody has a project like this that they have to promote. So there's so many other things that I could go into. When I tell you over the last week and a half, my phone has rung so much. I'm talking, I'm talking uh, Academy Award committee members. I'm talking film executives. I'm talking top reality stars. I'm talking comedians. I had a comic call me and say, Monique says she's pro-woman, but if you ask any promoter in this country, she will never let them book another woman on her comedy shows. And I learned of a story where Monique tried to sabotage a woman on a comedy show. So she's only pro-woman for the, per the Periscope broadcast because it serves her own agenda. Um, here's the thing. As far as Monique's career in Hollywood is concerned, it's a done deal. It's over. It, it, like, it's done. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's over. Should it be? Of course not. I will never deny that Monique is a talented actress. I will never deny at one point in her life she used to be really funny. I don't know who this woman is now. I don't know why she is the queen of self-destruction. I don't know why that husband of hers has her in a predicament where she cannot be gainfully employed and make a living using her gift. But what I do know is that my gift made room for me. And that Hollywood ain't perfect. And I know that women should be paid equal to men. But more so, people of color should be paid equal to our white counterparts. But the reality is, is this. You can affect change by being in the system, by having a seat at the table and being in this business, more so than you can by being the heckler on the sideline. And Monique and that husband are the hecklers on the sideline. So this will be, as best as I can, I say this, in my heart of hearts, I, I'm trying my best to stand on this. This will be the last time I give Monique this much energy because Monique gets off on these type of responses. She likes to go tit for tat and yin for yang and she likes to present her unfactual truths uh, and have you challenge. She loves all of this. You know why? Monique will not admit it, but she misses Hollywood. Monique misses working in the entertainment industry and almost annually Monique de does or says something to create controversy so that she could get at least some press and some attention that, like a junkie, it gives her her Hollywood fix. But no longer will I enable the person who needs to get a hit from Hollywood. No, I'm done. It's over for me. I'm focused on people who are working, who are successful, and who have thriving careers. I wish former Hollywood star Monique all the best. I don't know what her purpose outside of the industry is. Maybe she will become a touring theater play darling. You know, I wish she would have maybe made her theater debut in a Broadway show as the most decorated comic in the business. Um, I'm not sure uh, why her path is... Well, no, I am. I'm, I'm very sure why her path took the path that it did. But what I'm not sure about is why she doesn't want to fix it. So if you guys have a few more questions, I'll answer them. But this will be the last time. Monique gets this much of my attention ever again. And I'll say this while some of you ask me um, uh, any questions. And if any of you guys want to get on the video chat and chat with me tonight, uh, put the little hand emoji up. If you have video access, I will add you to the conversation. But let me say this to you. Some people in life will give you a master class in what not to do. Monique is the poster child for how not to approach your career in Hollywood. She is the template for what not to do. So anybody who supports it and gets under it and you believe in it, good for you. 
but you're also a person who may not thrive in whatever your area or your gifting is. Because when a person who's not employed is your role model for employment, well, the math adds up to be something that you don't want. So, uh, anybody got any other questions uh, that you'd like to ask? Anything that you want to talk about? Um, Angela, you want you want to join the conversation? All right. Let's see here. Hold on. Um. Hold on, Angela. I'm trying to figure out how to get you back in there. Invite Angela. What's up, Joe? How you doing, man? Hey, Angela Bottom. How are you? I'm good, man. I've been enjoying your conversation here lately. I'm about to give you some, give me some food and, you know, get my brother. What you going to order tonight? Well, my question to you, though, I do have a question for you, though. Yes, yes. With everything that she said, over the last week and a half and dissing everybody. You said exactly the, the same thing I did. Yes, she does raise all points, but at the end of the day, if she eliminates everybody what she what she has done, she will never get a, a job here. Never get one. She's done. Just like you said, she is it's, it's Yeah, it's I mean over. And you know and, 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 and the facts are as they are. She won an Academy Award eight years ago. She's been hired for two jobs. That's too, like, it's unthinkable, you know? Like, when you look at the amount of... Octavia Spencer may be in five movies this year alone. Monique's had two jobs in eight years. So, you know, Hollywood has pretty much told her what her status is. And, it's, and, and the reason I call her a former Hollywood star is she does not live in Hollywood. She does not work or thrive in the community. She lives in Atlanta. So I wish her all the best, but it's unfortunate that somebody as gifted as her has done this to their career. I mean, after eight years and then commanding the money that she's asking for and hasn't done anything, that is a... That's a stretch within itself. That's a huge stretch. And when I saw the documentation about like some of the financial challenges that she's faced, it, I would have maybe taken that half a million dollars, went and done a comedy special, killed it, showed people what my my worth and my value was, and then tried to build on top of that. But you know, I guess that's thinking logically, and everybody doesn't apply logic to their business and reasoning. Well, like I said, man, good good luck to her, but she she she's done, man. He's done. Well, thank you so much for chatting with the video. Most people are scared to get on video, so I appreciate you joining in with me tonight, and uh, thanks for being a regular around Thanks, here. man. Love you, man. All right. Love you, too. All right. Derek Williams wants to get in the conversation tonight. What's up, Derek Williams? How you doing, man? Mr. Murray, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. What you want to ask about tonight? Well, I actually just did my one Monique rant this morning. And okay, tell me about it. I just feel like this is just my opinion. Monique is claiming, you know, she did this video about Cheryl Underwood. And, you know, I love Cheryl Underwood. You know, there's very little that you can say about her without me wanting to attack you. Um, but they, she got on there talking about call her on her show or whatever. And I'm just like, Monique, you used to be a comedian. You are a former comedian. Therefore, you can't get paid what other comedians are getting paid. If I walked back into AT&T after I haven't worked there for four years, I can't expect to get paid what senior members are getting paid because I was here four years ago. And I'm like, Monique, you haven't been a comedian. You were not a comedian anymore. We don't even think you're funny. We just follow you on social media because you've been doing the same hip shake for the past three years. And <laughs> not only do I think your career has reached this baseline, I also think your weight loss has reached this baseline. You've been the same size for the past three months. Um, I, all right, Derek, you're, you're cutting up, sir. You're cutting up. I'm, I, I am so proud of her. But, John, she <laughs> made a career. The reason why she is who she is is because she made jokes about skinny black women. That's how she this became a queen of true. comedy. And then you want to... Know, but you know, Derek, just because just, here's the thing. I, I'm going to be factual and actual. I got I to gotta say that Monique decided to lose weight because she wanted to be healthier for the young children that she had. And so, you know, I don't want to necessarily joke her weight loss. But I do agree, her social media is not reflective 
of anything comedic or funny or engaging exactly. or that would make you smile. I mean, it's a lot of workout videos. And so my whole thing is maybe being a Zumba instructor. instructor I said is the, the next same thing. I was like, because, you know, maybe she should have went to Beach Bodies for a deal instead of Netflix because she seems more passionate about working out than she does about uh, making folks laugh these days. Yeah, I was like, maybe she should have done, maybe she should have got on there and start, if she hadn't a bad mouth Oprah, maybe she could have been talking about she loves bread too. But I mean, I love bread. That, that ship has sailed <laughs> and she's comparing herself to people like Amy Schumer who started off as a comedian and had consistent work. She's comparing and herself- And who's also, who's, also, who's also selling out arenas. Derek, I'm going to hop to Kalila Forte. I thank you for sitting there with me. I appreciate you, man. You know, I'm always here. All right, thank you. All right. I'm coming to you, Kalila Forte. It's great to have you guys chiming in on the dialogue tonight. Oh, Kalila, you raised your hand and then you declined. All right, anybody else want to get it? Oh, Rashida, the glam doctor wants to get in here. Makeup artist to the stars. I got a question for you, too. Okay, Rashida, what just happened? You declined. I'm going to send it back again. Hello. Uh, oh, I look like a mess. But listen, I you wanted to pretty. just chime in and say that um, I have really enjoyed the dialogue, and I've also enjoyed the lessons that I've learned here tonight. Um, me being in the industry, um, it really helped me to hear the things you said, especially about getting in the room, being gracious. Graciousness is such an underrated thing these days. People don't understand the power of being kind, being grateful, and being nice to people. And so when you talked about those things, I hope the people on here really um, jot those things down and take them, take them to heart because graciousness will take you a lot of places. That, um, and it don't matter about who you know what you know. Be nice and be kind. People will remember how you made them feel. Right. Let me ask you this, because uh, Rashida, you're a professional makeup artist. Um, you know, I had a makeup artist share. I had two makeup artists call me about their experiences with Monique, uh -huh. and neither one of the stories were good. But one of the stories was just very glaring to me, because one of the makeup artists, uh, Monique, fired in Europe and told her to find her own way home. I, as somebody who has traveled with stars and who, you know, it's a service industry. You're there to make them um, look and feel beautiful. Uh, by accentuating their natural beauty or whatever, how would you feel if one of your clients fired you in another country and told you, you had to find your own way back home? First of all, first of all, I would have that covered in a contract. That's number one. Like, that would already be covered in a contract. Okay, if you fire me, that's cool, but you're not going to make me get my own way home. You're not going to be able to get away with that. You know what I'm saying? Not, that that's not going right. to happen because I'm going to have all my stuff in writing. So that, I don't know what that makeup artist had in writing with her, you know, with her, with, as far as her plane tickets and stuff. So that's kind of jacked up. But that's a real, man, that, I know people have gotten sent home from plays. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, listen, Monique I mean, is now in a play. So there's some people that actually oh might God. be getting sent home. I, you know, Rashida, but, thank you for chiming in with me. I'm going to get to this young lady, Yeshia, and chat with her for a love minute. You. That's my girlfriend. I love Yeshika. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, listen, you got your whole squad here. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. All right. Yashika, I'm coming your way. We're going a little long tonight, everybody, because we got some guests. Yashika. Hey, John. Oh, my camera. All right, you blonde. They say blondes have more fun. We do on the weekends. <laughs> Thank you for wanting to join the conversation tonight. Thanks so much. I appreciate everything that you said. I am a great friend of Rashida's. We went to high school together. And um, I don't know if you've uh, seen me, but I was recently on the uh, most recent season of MasterChef. And one of the things that I did not do, I refused to do, was play up to the whole black girl attitude thingy. You know, I was going to be me regardless. And that graciousness, that niceness, got me um, so many people, so many fans across the globe saying that I appreciate you for standing up for who you are. You don't have to uh, be mean to people. You don't have to, um, you know, put somebody else down to build yourself up. If we're all in this together, then I'm going to support you. You support me. And if I'm doing a resurgence, if you're doing a resurgence, then you come in at the bottom sometimes. And however, coming in at the bottom can take you places that where you were when you thought you were at the top of your game never could have taken you. So I'm all for this. You, I, I appreciate the things that you've said tonight. 
I appreciate, you know, some harsh things with some stuff that was hard to hear, but you know, it was truth and truth always wins. And at the end of the day, if you, like Rashida said, people remember how you made them feel. And if you can't make people feel good, if people can't feel good being around you, I don't care what you do. I'm not going to want to pay for it because I don't feel good being around you. You don't, you don't make me want to have, um, an experience. I like having the John Murray experience. I like oh, having, thank you so much. I like having the Oprah experience. It just makes you feel a certain kind of way. And so, you know, other than that, who would want to be around somebody, no matter how great you are or were or think you are, if you can't make me better or make me feel better uh, by me being around you doing what you do, then I'm not going to want to pay for it, no matter how great it is. I'll go to the next guy who may not be so great, but it gives me that experience. I'll spend my money there and 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 follow them and what they do and push them in what they do. So I appreciate everything you said. I got some great nuggets tonight. Some stuff was hard to hear, but I appreciate you. Thank, thank you so much for chiming in. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for being around for the Let's Talk Live conversation. Yes, sir. Have a good night. All right, keep doing great things. We'll do Mandy Kelly, I'm coming your way. adding you mandy kelly manda kelly i'm sorry looks like it's trying to add you all right it's connecting manda kelly how you doing hey john what man you, i'm good i've been in my car i couldn't even go in i was listening to you i sent in my car oh thank you so we're much actually, we're it's like when you're in the car in. it's like it's like when you're in the car and a good slow jam come on and you be like oh that's my song i can't go in the house to this song go off. Can't go in the house. Can't go in the house. And we're neighbors. I live in D.C. Oh, you live in D.C.? Okay, cool. One of these times we're going to probably run into each other at Bus Boys and Poets. Oh, my gosh. Probably 5th and K. 5th and K. They're all the that's my. That's the one I like the most. Um, you are so right. I was just having the same conversation with someone online, but and they don't. They're like, this is about respectability. No, this is not about respectability. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm a teacher. She's crying over 500K? I'm and you, and as, a teacher, as a teacher, as a teacher, educator, you should be making 500K. You know, our teachers and our, our nurses with... and our 911 operators are so underpaid. And she's crying over 500K. I would be so excited if someone said, hey, you get 500K for what you're going to do. But it's not even that. She's complaining about something that it... It goes beyond that to me. You're complaining about something and then trying to say, you people, meaning us in the black community, need to do this. No, no, I don't need to do anything. I need to go protest that idiot living in the White House. I That's need it. to go protest so that they could quit pulling undocumented workers out of this country. I need to go down to Capitol Hill and make sure that they do something about these fake tax breaks. That's what I need to do. I don't need to stop watching Netflix, who just gave Shonda Rhimes a one hundred million dollars. Talk about it. To do whatever she wants to do. So don't talk to me about them being on the pay disparities case because that's not what it was. They looked at you and said, "Hey." You're a risk, but we'll take that risk because we can make some kind of money and maybe this will help you. But she looked at them and basically spit in their faces. No, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry, no. You can't but tell me that it. when they just gave Shonda that crazy cast. And then not only did they give her that crazy cast, they looked at her and said, do what you want. Do whatever you want with it. Listen, thank you so much. That was great perspective. I appreciate you chiming in. I'm going to try to get a few more people in. We're going a little long tonight. But since this is the grand finale of this conversation about former Hollywood star Monique, I want to get everybody in. So thank you. And thank you for being uh, you know, a regular around these parts. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Don't sit in that car too much longer, all right? Well, then you got to wrap it up. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. All right. Thank you. Hold on. Karan, I'm coming your way. And then I'm gonna try to get Sylvonia in, and then we're gonna say good night. Karan, oh, how you doing? How are you, John? Good. What city are you I'm in? I'm in Charlotte. 
Charlotte. That's a that's a booming town down there in Charlotte. So many people moving to Charlotte. There's a lot of people coming down here, more than the roads can handle. But they still don't. That, that, look, that's the same thing the folks in Nashville say. <laughs> So tell me, tell, me, tell me your thoughts tonight. What you think well, about Well, you know, I'm from Baltimore, and I go way back with Monique, back to the days when she was a full-figured model. We're talking about way, way back. Um, I didn't even know she was she a was. model. She was. She was a full-figured model. She was a part of the troupe that my mother was a part of. My mother was not full-figured, but Monique was a signature full-figured model. And they had contracts with stores like um, Ashley Stewart before it was Ashley Stewart. And... Um, I there was another huge one back in the day, but they've since changed names as well. But they used to go all around, um, all around the country. And she, this was way before her comedy club in Baltimore. And I was explaining to my daughter that she did used to have quite a stronghold in the comedy community, especially when she had that club in Baltimore. But her work as an actor is what's gotten her those awards. Not only that, but her arrogance has kept her out of so much opportunity. It is really remarkable. When you said this is a masterclass in what not to do, one of the things I, I explained to some of my friends who don't understand, and, and me working with Black Girl Nerds as a correspondent in, in the entertainment community, is you don't poop on press. Because it'll make them, it could make it break you. And when you carry that kind of arrogance around, and I, I, one of the things that came up I wonder at what point is she going to realize that these issues didn't begin until Sydney became her manager. Ooh, come on. Say, if we was in church right now, I'd say, say that. What? Thing. They didn't begin until he became her manager. And I'm wondering why, and, and this is public information, but it just came to my mind today. Every time she's doing a video from her house, the walls are lined with Naughty Pine. I'm not understanding that. But well, you, you said the walls are lined with Naughty what? Pine. What's Naughty, Naughty Pine? Pine is that wood that used to be in our basements in the 70s and 80s. Very old houses that have not been upgraded have Naughty Pine. Very old houses. So I'm just, it's just an observation. But when you carry that kind of arrogance, <laughs> it is what it is, son. She made it public, not me. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, but it's making me cry. <laughs> Ooh, and I, ooh, I even know what Naughty Pine was. Saying, that's why it's so warm in those rooms because she doesn't even have good light. Come on, man. Ooh, you've been doing ooh, this for you've been you a legend. Where's your light? Find the light. I'm crying like Sydney was last night for real. Ooh, that <laughs> oh Jesus. Mm. Listen, you know what? thank you she, so. She had a great career. She had a great run, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's not even an issue of being humble because a lot of what she said is true about the disparity in pay with black women, especially in comedy. It's true. You, you that cannot be disputed. But the way she went about right. this, you just yeah. And, and, she, and this is the point I made earlier. Yeah, when she some a, a small portion of what she was saying has some legitimacy to it, but she's attaching herself to a legitimate movement. Time's yeah. Up has been in existence. They were doing the work. They've been doing the work all year. It's an infrastructure that was being put in place last fall. I mean, so th there's already a fight there. So when you attach your personal agenda, which is starting to fall apart now that we realize that they really actually offered you $3 million uh, uh, to come in and showcase for them so they can make sure that you were still funny uh, uh, before offering you the half million dollar flat right. So you attach your personal agenda to a legitimate movement and it compromises the discussion. About you know what else nobody's talking about? Netflix said, never mind. She didn't walk away from the table. They didn't give her a chance to. Netflix pulled the deal. <laughs> so as long as we're keeping it real in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Netflix pulled the deal. They said, never mind. And that was before she posted her first video. They walked away from her at 500000 And they did offer her that three. You're talking good, my sister. Thank you for sitting hey, in with us good tonight. Good to see you. I will do this more often, Absolutely. all right? Absolutely. Bye. All right. Uh, Savonia, I'm coming your way. I hope you guys don't mind. We're going late tonight. We're having a good conversation. just wanted to get some other people in so that it doesn't feel like this is just me talking. I really want to hear the heart of some of you guys and see how you've processed some of the things that were said, some of the things that are going on. Um, and, you know... And I learned what Nettie Pine was tonight. So, Devonia, all I see is a black screen. Where you at? I'm here. I can't hear 
can't see you. Maybe the connection is not good. Oh yeah, you kind of sound like you're talking through a Wendy's drive-through. Maybe I, not. Okay, but I in a, in a little bit. Oh, oh, tell me what. Tell me what. Tell me what you want to say. Go oh, ahead, yeah, get to it. Okay. Well, um, all right. It was somebody else who said they wanted to get in on the conversation. I'm gonna do one more. Uh, we're gonna wrap this thing up and we're gonna talk. Uh, CJ Bowen. I know a lot of y'all was trying to get in here tonight. CJ Bowen, how you doing, my sister? Hey, I, hi, John. How you doing? I, I, wait a minute. Oh my God, I, I sound like Monique. But my sister. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks what for letting me the world? I, What'd you say? What part of the world are you in? I'm in Baltimore. Oh, Monique's hometown. Yes. Um, yeah. So I wanted to give the Baltimore perspective, but the young lady before me um, chimed in a little bit about it. Um, I want to I want to say I'm going to do my Tower Banks impression. I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you, Monique. I, I have loved Monique for years. Um, and I'm very disappointed in her behavior and lack of. Transparency. You know, and um, she really had opportunity to do great things. And um, I, I don't, like me being the optimist that I am, I, I believe that if she does humble herself and, and gets herself together, there is a second chance for her out there. But she's burned so many bridges um, along the way. And the fact that she tries to uh, control the, the conversation and tries to uh, get black people, black women, on her side that doesn't have any validity, you know, that just damages her reputation even more. And it's, it's very, it's very disheartening. Uh, uh oh, did you freeze up for me? Okay, did, you, you froze okay. up for a second. It said, it said, it's very, it's very, <laughs> like the DJ was mixing you and then it froze <laughs> up like, freeze, mannequin challenge. Yeah, um, it's, just, it's disappointing. After, it, yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can imagine. You know, but, you know, I appreciate your perspective. And um, thank you for, like, being willing to come on video for the camera. Because most people, when I ask, they're like, no. So no thank problem. you for joining in. And uh, listen, go get a good crab cake down at the harbor for me in Baltimore. I just okay? had some crabs, um, too. So All right, cool. I got thank Obey on my, my fingers. Obey on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, a few more people. Uh, uh, a couple of brothers want to get in here. So I want to talk to y'all. I'm coming to you, uh, Brother Ben. Oh, can't invite guests. Hold on, I'm trying again. All right, Brother Brent, I don't know what's going on. Maybe you signed off. Uh, Adrian, you don't have the camera function, so I can't come to you. Uh, oh, Miss Moore wants to join the broadcast? Let's see if she accepts. All right, it's trying to add you, Miss Moore. Miss Geniani Moore. Up, oh, she declined. Why'd you ask then, Miss Moore? Um. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try you, brother Ben, one more time. It says I can't invite you. I'm not sure if there's a configuration issue or something here. Um, I'm gonna try Moni B. And then we're really gonna try to wrap up. Thank you guys for being so willing to join the conversation tonight. Um, I really do appreciate it. Moni B, hey. are you in your car too? How you doing? You got good, I am. Hey, my Are love. you in the car? You got good light in your car. I'm good. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> y'all are funny. Y'all just, y'all characters just like me. I love it. <laughs> Hug yourself, baby, while you're in that car. Hey, my love. My love. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to talk about tonight? Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. So here's my thoughts on it, and I spoke about it earlier today. I have a huge problem with the fact that she is trying to be just this martyr for, for her cause that has nothing to do with any social relevance. It has nothing to do with anything that makes sense with, for anyone except for Monique to get some money in her pocket. Don't try to manipulate people with your fake sincerity about being a part of the issues and all that. 
she is she is a, a master manipulator in finding out more information about the three million dollar deal and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, girl, you can save that, my love. You you need to go somewhere and have a seat, have several seats, have a stadium a seat. <laughs> Ooh, that's my biggest Listen, issue. Listen, I love with me her. some you. <laughs> and I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Listen, thank you. straight thank out of the Bronx. I'm in Raleigh. Thank you, Raleigh. That's Shirley Caesar time. That's it, Shirley it, Caesar it, time. We do church a whole lot, but I'm from the Bronx, New York. I'm from the Bronx. Come on, Boogie Down Bronx. My, Come one on. Of my best friends, Coco from SWV, is from the Boogie Down Bronx. Yes. I went to church. Well, thank you so with, much. I, went I to appreciate you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for chatting tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Um. Okay, I'm gonna try you one more time, brother Ben. Let me see if it works. Oh, I was about to get a brother in the conversation. Brother Ben is adding you. There you go. What up, brother Ben? Can you hear me? Brother Ben. I can't hear you. I can see your mouth moving. Nope, we can't hear you, brother Ben. You don't got the mute button on, do you? Oh, you can't hear me either. Well, we tried. I appreciate you, though. Thank you. Um, all right. Listen, we've exhausted this conversation. I just want to say for real, y'all, I appreciate you being in here. Um, uh, I get really good numbers for Let's Talk Live, but tonight the numbers were pretty freaking amazing. So thank you. We've been in here an hour and 20 minutes. This is going to be a long broadcast for anybody that comes back and has to watch the rebroadcast. But um, I have no personal agenda with Monique. I literally was minding my own business for the last three years. And all of a sudden, I started getting called out in radio interviews and stuff. So um, I wish Monique and that husband all the best. Um, I wish them sound mind and mental clarity. Um, and I, I pray that there is an awakening um, and that at some point they can get the help that they need to make better choices in life. And maybe she can resuscitate and come back into a community that has uh, pretty much voted her off the island. So thank you guys. Next week we'll be back to regular scheduled programming. We'll be talking about the topics and the issues and the TV shows and the films and other projects that really uh, are of, of more interest to you. Um, I'm sorry that we had to designate a whole night to former Hollywood star Monique, but you know, um, I'm a tourist. Uh, I'm gonna mind my business. I'm gonna be laid back. I'm gonna chill out but you can only wave that red flag in front of me so long before I charge at you. And um, I've tried to be respectful because she's a woman. I've tried to be respectful because I think that there could be some uh, mental inefficiency there. Um, and But this is the last night that I'm going to address it because any more attention just gives her the Hollywood fix that she needs. And uh, I'm going to go work in my community and let her continue to watch from the outside. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Bless you all. And uh, we'll talk next week, all right?